Okay, so we are now recording and you have a quorum. All right. Welcome to the new year, everybody. Thank you. Had a nice Thank holiday. Um, so, you know, just want to, I guess, highlight on some of the things that we did uh, last year, you know, with a lot of progress made, we had uh, different uh, execution strategies. Uh, I, I know we had a transfer from Laura to myself. And again, Laura did an awesome job. And, you know, Lori, I, you know, I, I guess the amount of work that you've put in and the support that you've given, I, I think it's been awesome and to everybody. So, you know, I think you all need to be proud of what we accomplished last year. Um, and I, you know, especially as a volunteer, right, for the town. And I just hope that we can make monumental progress this year. I think it's important that we stay connected with the town um, and with the community at large. Uh, there's a lot of actions that the community wants to drive. So there's a, there's interest. And uh, I hope we'll stay connected to support some of the actions from our CARP. And there's a lot of things that we have this year. Um, we have funding for heat pumps. We have PACE. We have... Um, solar bylaw. Um, uh, I mean, I'm missing several things, but uh, you all know what I'm talking about. Uh, and you know, making progress in the transportation sector. Um, so a lot of things that we need to look forward to, challenging as well. Um, but some of the other towns in the state are putting forward very robust plans. I noticed that um, uh, Northampton is requesting three million dollars, and they're coming up with a 2030. Uh, target for um, carbon neutrality. Um, so it's very interesting to see that. Um, so just um, something to keep in mind, a lot of towns are applying pressure. Um, I think we can too. We, we should be leading the charge and there is a lot of interest in the community. So um, with that, you know, I'll, I'll um, you know, switch to our vision, um, you know, is to work cooperatively with the town and community to raise climate awareness and achieve results with a sense of urgency. And in everything we do, we will put environmental justice at the forefront of our decisions. Um, does anybody want to comment or? Uh, Sue, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, yeah. Um, you need someone to take minutes. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, let's see, Laura did it last time. And. Jesse, you did one before Laura, so it'll be done. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I went on a spiel, right? <laughs> um, does anyone else want to add or make any comments about last year and this year? Okay. I can't see any of their hands are raised. I'm sorry. Okay. We're good. All right, and then uh, we're keeping these five pillars. Um, again, these names, you don't have to be the only person doing all the work. You know, people who are in, within our uh, committee who are interested in specific sectors, so please reach out. Um, so this hasn't changed. We'll continue with this, these five pillars. Uh, we have metrics, uh, and I guess I do need all of you, especially people who are leading these pillars to come up with specific metrics that we can talk about and track. I know the community dashboard is something that we were talking about and hopefully will be implemented this year. How might that look like if we add those these metrics into our dashboard? Something to think about. Um, and then in terms of open actions, uh, Stephanie, you have first couple there. Any updates? No, um, no, not since the last meeting and the holidays. Okay. I've been up for quite a bit. And then Don, have you reached out to the chamber? Um, I you weren't on Vasu. I've had I, I've had RSV and pneumonia for the last three weeks. Oh, wow. <laughs> have done nothing except for <laughs> rest. Oh, you feeling better, Don? Now I am as of Tuesday, as of yesterday. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah, that's rough. You know, my uh, my wife had COVID for about a week. Um, 
yeah. yeah. Not the same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hopefully, hope you feel better. I'll, so we'll keep this action on, but something that um, I guess you want to keep in mind. Um, and then Stephanie and Don, did you receive any feedback from the committee? I didn't. No. Okay. Are you um, for the, oh, for the pace flyer? No. Yeah. All right. I think this is something that is important before we meet with the chamber or, right, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should. I mean, okay. people should be on board with the flyer. Yeah. Can everyone prioritize this within the next couple of weeks before our next meeting? If you can give feedback to, Don and Stephanie. Do you all have the document? I know. I just wondered, did we send it? <laughs> I'll have I to take a look. So. We might not have sent it. I don't think so. I don't okay. remember. Um, I think Stephanie, Don would you and be able I to met right after the call. Well, Don and I met, so I can't remember. I have to what? follow up with our, because like, I wasn't sure, Don, if you were going to do some revisions to it. I can't remember how we left it. I'd have to take a look back at my notes. Oh, so I do see the flyer actually. Yeah, I thought you oh, sent okay. it to all of us on December seventh. Yeah, and uh, I could just forward it to everybody again. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay, Stephanie, your item is next. I'm um, forwarding. Any update um, on that? Yeah. So we just have to um finalize that and then are you talking about the feedback about the solar survey no this is still pace okay we'll so yeah that's the, solar, yeah right so i need feedback so on done. it before we finalize yeah. it so yeah, that's yeah. connected right. with the one above and yeah, then yeah. um yeah don and i you know have been meeting and we'll meet again i guess probably um I think we've had a conversation about this already. I mean, I think we've discussed it as a committee and then Don and I met and talked about it a little more. So uh, we haven't come up with the exact strategy, but I think we talked a little bit about who we want to reach out to. And we did actually, we did talk a little bit about strategy. Um, Don, um, is it okay if I jump in here? Sure, sure. We talked, you know, a bit about um, maybe uh, reaching out to the chamber about um, doing some kind of an event at a chamber breakfast um, and having, you know, inviting business owners to a chamber breakfast and having uh, Don and or either the finance director or someone from the actual PACE program come in and speak to business owners uh, about what the program entails. So that was one strategy. Um, and then I know we talked about having information available here in town hall for when folks come for permitting so that there's like a flyer information that's available uh, for them to have access. And then I can't remember, Don, fill in what I'm missing. I know we talked about a few things and I'm sorry, I don't have my notes right yeah, in front of me. Was, there was some discussion about, I think, I think Jesse or somebody raised the issue of, could we identify, um, you know, large owners of, um, multifamily projects or commercial buildings um, who uh, we, we might be able to identify and try to communicate with in, in some way, shape, or form. Oh, and we did talk about with the, um, with the heat pump program, reaching out to landlords to sort of try to get PACE and the heat pump program together to hmm. sort of um, encourage landlords to maybe utilize the police program for, you know, building retrofits for heat pumps. So we talked about like combining those two things. So again, just a matter of maybe, you know, pulling that together, but the heat pump program is um, still sort of in the works of being developed. So mm -hmm. but but we have that a piece now, right? Sorry? We have a consultant for the heat pump. No, no, we don't. No. We so we have, we got a proposal that sort of is, which is what we needed in order to write. The town has decided that it wants to create an um, 
RFP and then it kind of has to because of the finance uh, financial piece over a certain threshold we're required to actually do outreach to other consultants. We can't just go with one. So um, I talked to Lori today. We had a meeting about um, that program and the, the um, proposal that I've re received thus far. So I'm going to do a draft. Lori's going to review it. She's going to comment on it um, and provide feedback. And then we're going to take that revised RFP and then I will submit it to procurement here. And then it would go out to the state list of consultants. If we do it as a sort of general RFP, it's gonna take longer um, because it has to be advertised in the newspaper and it's just a longer process. So we're it's faster if we go through the state and there's lots of consultants on the state list. So it's not like it really limits us. I mean, it's actually, it'll be okay, I think, to go through that state list. And I can share the list um, with folks like when we're ready to request um, proposals. I'm happy to to see if I can easily, com you know, provide the list of consultants so that if people want to take a look and have ones that they specifically think we should send it to, happy to provide it and do that and get feedback. Stephanie, are we targeting like end of Q1, where we get a consultant finalized and then awareness I'm campaigns. Doing this as fast as I can with yeah, okay. the resources that I have and the other projects yeah. that I have. So it's it is moving forward. I can't tell you. Ex I I don't want to say exactly because I'm I am focused on it. It's kind of the heat pump program to me is kind of like one of my big priorities right now. But I you know, it, it takes time to like develop the RFP. And I think, you know, we want to get it right. And we want to make sure we're hitting the points that we want to, um, especially that, you know, Lori pointed out some great um, omissions from what was provided to us. So I think, you know, with her feedback, I think we'll have a good proposal. And it's going to take at least a few weeks, like once we get it out, it's going to take a few weeks for consultants to respond. And then we have to review their proposals. And there may be interviews and you know, and if we if there are interviews, then certainly I would want to loop Lori into those interviews if she has time and is available. Okay, can I mark this action complete then, the specific one? Um, we and Don talked about it. Oh All yeah, right. yep. Okay. Andra has a question. <clears throat> yes, Andra. Um, let's see. On the phone, it's not <laughs> easy to lower hand. Um. <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting this mixed up with one of the other grants, but um, I, I I thought that we heard um, about a change to how you're going to structure with either the heat pump program or one of the other ones um, where the, the bulk of the um, appropriation was budgeted or proposed to go to a consultant and then it, it, you changed it or it was changed. I don't know. Um, well, the um, I think, well, I can tell you that with the heat, yeah, I think with the heat pun program and it's kind of the opposite. Um, we actually were going to hire a staff person and instead of that, it's been revised to work with a consultant to do the heat pump program because we'd engaged them for basically two years. Um, that's the proposal because the funding, we only have the funding for a certain period of time. So the idea was to engage a consultant to work on the outreach and work directly with the community on the heat pump program. We're also trying to build in, and this is the piece that Lori and I talked about today, um, uh, community advocacy education program so that some community members can be um, uh, can be um, taught how to do the outreach and work with community members so that after that program is over, there's still outreach about heat pumps to the community so that, you know, again, that's where the, like the community captains and that kind of piece comes in. So that's going to be part of the program, but it'll still come in more towards the end. Um, and it's not going to be a staff, internal staff, other than me sort of maybe coordinating with the consultant and checking in with the consultant um, and maybe working with if there's like a team of people. I, I Again, I don't know how that's going to unfold, but um, that was the change. I think that's the change you're referring to. I don't know. I, think... I thought that I thought that <laughs> there was going to be um, money going to 
incentives or some some there other is it's both way. yeah there's both no there's so the way we're looking at this is that we don't want more than half of the funding to go to a consultant i mean and if you hired staff either way you're going to spend a big chunk of that administrative piece right on the, the funding will have to go to that administrative piece the idea was that to have an entity that kind of already works with that and have them um have them do some of the you know sort of be in charge of some of that outreach and then the um and then the you know yeah they would do that outreach part and then the the sort of advocacy group could come in at the end and there'd be some funding sort of advocated for that but then the rest of it is for incentives so at least half of that funding should go to incentives. I mean, and I, I think we all internally feel very strongly that at least have to have, has to go to incentives. And the focus is really on direct outreach to, like the program would be available to everybody, but the consultants outreach would really be tar targeted for low income homeowners and also the rental community as well. And building, you know, I think building owners too, if we can, you know, really get them with that CPACE you know, program, like marrying those two things might be a way to really engage them. And I think when we do the CPACE outreach, it might be good to sort of have the heat pump program a little more established so that we can definitely use that as like a, you know, a tool and incentive to, to get them engaged. Yeah, makes sense, Stephanie. Thank you. Sure. And then Stephanie, did you hear back from everybody on the call? Um, the solar survey questions. Um, I got a few responses. I think just from Jesse and Steve, and those were sent to the consultant. Okay. And so the consultant um, had extensive feedback, actually. So Steve had quite extensive feedback, which was really helpful. Um, and then uh, there were other committee members from the solar bylaw working group who, who had some extensive feedback. So I met with the consultant today and um, she's taking all of that into consideration and we'll revise it, the survey and send the next draft, which um, because we're on this topic, I just wanted to say that um, I think we would like to schedule her for the meeting on the 18th, which is the next meeting. And I know you already have a guest speaker, but I think we should make time because this is a timely process that we have yeah. to adhere to um, for her to review the revised survey questions with all of you. And then also to talk about the community engagement process. And I will have documents for both of those to you prior to that meeting on the 18th. Okay. And and Lori, who's uh, who's going to be attending on the eighteenth? I think it's Stella had somebody. Right? Oh, it's Stella. Okay. Yeah, that so, was going to be Erin to come talk about transport. But I was actually going to say she can't do the eighteenth anymore. She'd prefer to do the first at five thirty. So there's actually no conflict. Oh, that's great. Good. Okay. Okay, so I can confirm then with um, Adrian Dunk from GZA that she'll be on the agenda for the eighteenth. Lori, did you have somebody else on uh, for the education series? No, the next thing that I was going to plan was a panel, but yeah. I haven't started doing that yet. I was figuring okay. that would be for February or March after it gets get past the the, the, um, the holidays. So I was going to start planning that now if it's still something we want to do. Um, there, I, I know um, uh, this may end up being part of one of the things that Stephanie's been working on. So. I'm not sure. I think Stephanie and I need to talk first before I start planning that. Let's talk again. Yeah, I think it should line up with everything else that you're going to be doing, Lori. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, there's some planning that might be needed. Uh, Jesse? The, uh, the ACJA, um, I'm sure you all know the Amherst Climate Justice Alliance is they are doing a series of um, events this early winter and 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 so it may be that we, we would use our event capital to sort of 
encourage people to attend their events. So this is a group of students in, that um, Vasu connected me to there. So they're going to have a, um, a community Sunrise art project. Amherst, is, Jesse, you're talking Sunrise Amherst, right? Not ACJ. I, well, they're calling themselves ACJA. OK. OK. A ACJA? I have encouraged them and us and everyone not to use acronyms. But <laughs> so the Climate Justice Alliance, which I think overlaps yeah. with Sunrise, it's sort of like a wraparound group sort of. So they're going to have like a, a community art project um, organized by Mothers Out Front, and then a panel with panelists ask questions pertaining to climate change advocacy in Amherst, which I'm going to sit on. That was a topic I wanted to bring up. At some point, I want to kind of pick everyone's brain. I've asked for the questions ahead of time. I'd love to hear all of our responses if I'm representing the group. And then, um, then there's going to be a, another event, which I'm not exactly sure what it is. So th those are events that are happening. So I just want to keep that on our radars, um, not to schedule things during other good, good groups events. Jesse, can you connect us to that group and let us know when that when their meetings are or just send a link or something? Yeah, I'm trying to, to I am trying to get more information from them, but I definitely will do that. Yeah, the, I can um, do that too. students are taking the lead on that, um, but it's a coalition of all the different climate organizations in um, and Mothers Out Front is one of them, CAN is one of them. So. Yeah. Thanks, Jesse. All right, so one action that's urgent, everybody, please send your feedback to Stephanie and Don for our next meeting. And with that, let me move on to the next part of the agenda and uh, review and vote uh, on the minutes. But the, it, we, yes. we didn't we didn't do the um, initial thing. Uh, review minutes. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I'm getting at now. Oh, this is all vision and charge. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Did everyone get a chance to review the minutes? No. Move we accept them as they are. Thanks, Lori. A second. Okay, I uh, need a voice vote in no particular order. Goldner? Yes. D? Yes. Allison? Yes. Raghavan? Yes. Selman? Yes. Reger? Yes. Rose? Yes. <laughs> Roof? Yes. Okay, the minutes are approved. All right, thank you, everybody. And let's open it up to the public for comments. We have two attendees, including Anna. <laughs> if either of you would like to speak, please uh, virtually raise your hand and I'll unmute you. You don't think so? Okay, let's move on to the next part of the agenda then and talk about our progress report. So John, Don, I don't know if you have any updates on CPACE with you falling sick. Um, okay, I'll turn it over to Stella for transportation then. Uh, yeah, so Aaron is gonna come talk now, um, the first about what's going on with mostly bike, pedestrian and bus in the city of Durham, North Carolina. Stephanie, would you like me to send another email about that? Or is this, do you want to just put that in the packet for February 1st, 530? Um, probably just send me another email just so it's clear to me. Okay, great. Yeah. And, and Stella, so cool. I could, I'll send you a flyer template that you can use to create one. Okay. And I would also recommend that you talk to TAC and maybe there should there should be some interest from TAC to be part of this meeting, I would think. Yeah, it, I've so before, I can't remember when I last gave an update um, because things got a little 
confusing right before <laughs> the winter, but but I, I, Andra, I believe, connected me with somebody from TAC, and we were supposed to chat, but then we didn't, but um, it's proved, it's a little bit tricky. If anybody has contacts in TAC, continue to send them to me, it is the long and the short of it. Um, but yeah, I, I will do that. And then it sounded like there was enthusiasm for Jesse's idea of, of middle schoolers coming to chat about um, youth mobility and the bus system. And I think that's a great idea. So also if anybody has, and Vasu and Steph, Vasu I think suggested that there'd be kind of a transportation thing monthly uh, as far as like guest speaker. So if anybody has, knows, has names for enthusiastic middle schoolers who like riding the bus, um, send those to me as well. And that would be then if Aaron is coming to talk about transport in February with like lots of time for questions, then that would then be transportation for March. Um, and then- and, and Stella, we would have the uh, electric vehicle vendors coming in in April, right around uh, Earth Day, right, Stephanie? Right. Um, yeah. yeah, they should, well, we'll have, I don't know about vendors, but we would have, um, the Pioneer Valley Electric Automobile Association is typically present at the Sustainability Festival, and that's on Earth Day this year. And they always have vehicles, but they're not they're not vendors. They're just I, one year we did have vendors. So they were able to get some vendors to come, but they don't always we don't always have the space to do that because the farmers market typically starts the same weekend that we have the festival. And so there's kind of a conflict of space. So we were able to do it one year because we held the festival a week earlier, but I don't think we want to change the date this year because it's right on Earth Day. Yeah, one time they did it next to the library, uh, Stephanie. And... Uh, not the sustainability festival is always on the is always on the town. So the electric vehicle vendors were. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So they do that. Actually, she does that a lot. So okay. there's a woman named Kay who is the kind of the primary liaison for that group mm -hmm. to the town. And they often have events. They sometimes they've done them at Big Y Plaza. They've done them all over the place. Okay. So um, but you know, um we could we would definitely have some vehicles for that event. Okay. Yeah. I think I would still want to try to find a speaker for April who's who doesn't really have a stake in things financially who can come give kind of a presentation on the model of the heat pump presentation that can answer some questions about, about logistics and charging and range anxiety, um, that kind of stuff. Um, so then that's the transportation plan and update through April, if that sounds good to me. The big thing, it sounds good to you. I don't know. I'm <laughs> good. Uh, sounds good to everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, so so feel free to send me TAC contacts still and um, middle school contacts. Um, have you tried to reach out through the staff liaison that's on the, I think it's Guilford Mooring, but. I don't think there was an, was there an email address listed? If not, if you. Um, if you want, I could send it to him. I think he has some of his staff actually help with the agenda. So I could reach out to them and ask them to see if you can get on there. Yeah. Like if you send me an email saying what you want to meet with them about, then I could forward that on to them so that you actually at least can potentially get on the agenda. Cause I think that's what you're trying to do, right? Oh yeah. Okay. There is an email. I see an email. Yeah. Cause right now their next meeting is listed as November 20th. Um, which it definitely isn't, you know what I mean? Um, but I can email him. His email is on here. Okay. Uh, well, and copy me on it. Okay. CC me good. on it as well. Cause that then if you good. don't get any follow-up, um, I can, I can help. Okay. Sounds great. I'm just going to make a note of that. Andra, go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, um, you know, ask if you're thinking that the topic you would present on is 
the things in the CARP that are tech topics. I, I was imagining it being kind of less of a presentation and more of a, this is where we're at on transport. Like how can we, how can we mutually support each other? Because I would assume, I would assume that they're aware of the CARP. You, you don't think that's a safe assumption. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that's something we can kind of, I, I think um, maybe in preliminary email conversations, I can kind of figure out. Definitely at a minimum invite, invite their membership to what we're doing and see if there's anything that we should be directing people towards. Well, I think Duane had his hand up before me. I was just gonna <clears throat> offer, I may, I may not be alone, but um, I, I've been driving an EV for a year and a half um, and I, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm an expert in terms of, of the technology and the infrastructure and so forth, but happy to, you know, if it's more of a conversation uh, type of, uh, um, opportunity with with uh, a, a part of the presentation that I'm happy to sort of just bring in my own experience uh, with EV and uh, range issues and recharging um, and and the um, performance of the car. That's good to know. Thanks. Yeah. Stephanie and then Don. Um, yeah, I was just going to say I wonder if um, it if you actually got on their agenda to maybe talk about the CARP. Like maybe just talk about the transportation section of the CARP with them. Mm -hmm. Like that might be the sort of way to get on their agenda. And that okay. way you can tie them together. That sounds good. It's a great idea, Stephanie. Thanks. Don? Yeah, apropos of what Wayne said, I've actually been driving an EV for four years, <laughs> 63,000 miles worth. Um, and happy to talk about my experience and the differences between the you know how far i can go in the summer versus how far i can go in the winter i i can get from my house to damascot and maine in it and i'm in the we're in the process of buying a new um hyundai ionic 5 um which i've been driving which is quite an impressive ev um so happy to do that too um i can't help a lot with charging Although I do have some apps because we mostly charge it at home. We have a home charger. So, I mean, let me know what you all think, but I, I honestly think it would maybe that's maybe a more effective approach is to just kind of have a round table with Dwayne and Don and, and maybe somebody who's in the industry to talk about charging, but maybe not even because I feel like that's what people are really craving when it comes to a lot of this stuff is just kind of neighbor to neighbor chit chat about does it work and that's something that we can really offer that that isn't maybe going to be as easy to find at, at something like the sustainability fair when there's industry representatives or do people think it's really helpful they're not i just want to be clear that they're not industry representatives they're literally just mm -hmm. people who like yeah. like Dwayne and Don yeah. who love electric vehicles um we did okay. we used to have a member unfortunately he passed away but we had a member who even built his own electric vehicle like years and years ago like way before way ahead of the curve mm -hmm. um and he used to show up with his car and just sort of share it with people but yeah these are not industry people Stephanie i thought i recalled it the sustainability fair last year maybe at some point there was there were um some evs with representative from dealers um that happened one year okay okay and that was a year that like i said it's it was a year that we had the festival so that it didn't conflict with the mobile market i mean the farmer's oh, market I I so see. um and typically that they are in conflict um, so yeah. we needed the space and we just did it that one year. Okay. Anna has a comment. Anna. Stephanie, I don't know if you have yeah, to take Hold on, let me. Anna, go ahead. You can unmute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry uh, to kind of break protocol. Um, Stella, I apologize. I cut out for a minute here, but um, I'm not sure who you 
um, who you emailed from TAC, they do have a town email, which is TAC at AmherstMA.gov, but the chair is Tracy Zafian, um, and she's very responsive via email. Uh, is that who you reached out to? And if not, I can, I'm happy to send along her email. No, and I would love her email. Thank you so much. Great. All right. I will, I will email it yeah. to you. Thank you. And I apologize. I'm, I'm driving. Otherwise, I just would have sent it along, but thank you. Thanks, Anna. Jesse? Yeah, Tracy's great. She's done some cool research on driving while talking on the phone too. You should ask her about that. Um, Thanks, Jesse. I think for the, oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry to call you out by accident, but also hopefully I'll save your life. Um, <laughs> I think one thing that would be really great at any thing event like this would be someone that's current on any tax or state federal incentives just sort of because I know not every vehicle qualifies and someone that's just really simplifying and give that that guidance and and how that's done and what it really means and who that would affect. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, Thanks. Don? That's really good. Yeah, I think the IRS just released their guidance um, for uh, this coming year on the tax incentives. And I mean, the federal tax incentives, I don't know, Massachusetts has its own, but um, I know the IRS just released its guidance and it is really complicated. Yeah. Not so much for the first couple of months, but it's going to get more complicated after that because there's a split between assembling the vehicle here in the United States mm -hmm. and where the components for the lithium battery are coming from. Um, but at least for the first two or three months, it's it's one $7,500 credit. As long as the car is below, you know, $54,000, I think. Um, and, um, and and again, there's only they, they they've listed what the acceptable models are. It, it's it's a publication that can be found pretty straightforward. Thanks, Don. Dwayne. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, just to add to that on on the states level on the state side, um, there is the what's called the more EV. Uh, uh, I forget the acronym. What Massachusetts something ov more ev um anyhow uh which offers sim uh well not similar but different additional rebates from the federal government uh it's a little bit depending on the on the um type of car as well but it's all listed quite quite well it works it's worked very well i tapped into that um on, on the federal side quite frankly it's important to get the rebate but the dealer dealt with the at least in my case the dealer dealt with the rebate uh, from the federal level and clearly subtracted that from the our bargain price. Um, uh, so that's a little bit trans, uh, uh, less transparent to the to the purchaser. but um, on the the state more EV, that's the uh, state the 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 uh, purchaser um, needs to apply for that. a little bit more cumbersome, but it works. Um, I will if this is a if this is sort of a if we're not, if we're talking about one of our meetings as an educational thing, which I think we are, as opposed to the sustainability fair, um, I could, we could reach out to DOER, which runs the Clean Cities program, which is about transportation. Uh, they, it's a federal program, so I suspect they're pretty versed on the federal funding as well, but they also implement the more EV program. Uh, so they might be able to give up. I, I don't know anymore who does that at DOER, uh, but um, we could reach out to them and, and see if somebody might be able to join us for, you know, half an hour uh, that at the uh, needed evening. Don and then Lori. Yeah, the other thing to keep in mind is that the, the Fed thing is a tax credit, um, which which is great for some of us and which is not so great um, for probably the majority of us. And uh, although I think the new law is gonna actually provide, whereas the more EV is actually, they send you a check for you know $2,500 or whatever it is. Um, 
the feds as a tax credit, although my understanding of the new law, the, the one that the Republicans are screaming about now in their election of their, um, or failure to elect the speaker. The, the, uh, lack, of, is, the lack of their election. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it, 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 I think the new law is actually going to give money to people for whom the tax credit um, yeah. would not be valuable for lack of a better way of describing it. Um, so it, there's a lot of complexity about it, but it's it, it can be run down for sure. Thanks, Tom. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just two comments. One, the new law, the new federal law, I believe has still tax credits though for used vehicles. But as far as I know, and I can remember, it's all tax credits, which is unfortunate. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is I'm not sure the tax credits is the thing to really, it's actually fairly straightforward to find the web page where they're all described. It's only about five minutes worth of, you know, one slide, two slides, maybe one for the federal government and one for the state. Um, so it'd be a small part of any presentation. And the problem is I tried to look into, I did look into electric vehicles last summer. I did quite a lot of shopping around ended up not getting one, ended up getting a used vehicle in part because they're so hard to get right now. Um, but the other problem is that the tax credits aren't doing, I think, what they were supposed to do because, uh, for example, the Chevy Bolt, which is no longer eligible for any of the credits, was pretty much exactly $7,000 cheaper than comparable models that were eligible for the tax credit last year. So, <laughs> and they even said their ads all last year for the Chevy Bolt were, you know, I think it was actually $6,300 they were officially giving off and they're still doing that. They're still advertising them as you know reduced by $6,300. So I'm not sure that these tax credits are doing what they're supposed to. I think that the car companies are basically pocketing them, raising, you know, raising their prices appropriately, uh, which I think is unfortunate, but that was what I observed last summer. Hmm. Stephanie, thanks, Lori. So I just, um, ironically, forwarded myself an article that I wanted to share with all of you and I just um, didn't get a chance to send it out today, but it's specifically about this. Um, uh, and they were talking about the, they're focused on the federal tax credit and I can forward this article to you, but um, Don, I'm curious because they were saying that the, um, the federal, um, the treasury department wouldn't be releasing its EV tax credit rules until March. So, I don't know if like there's sort of initial information that was out, but there's more information coming. This article was just released yesterday, so this is pretty updated. Uh, there, there, there is a, a publication. Um, there's probably more coming out, Stephanie. I mean, there's big battles going on, um, and and I happen to know of it because I, I'm partial to Hyundai's, um, and because they don't manufacture here in the U.S. There are no tax credits for right. any Hyundai cars. Um, and Hyundai's upset because they were in the process of opening a manufacturing facility um, in Tennessee, but it takes a, a period of time to get any sort of manufacturing facility up and running. Um, but I think, apropos you, Lori, I think the Bolt now will be eligible. They just ran out of their credits, but under the new law, the Bolt will for sure, Chevy, and Tesla for sure will be eligible. Um, and there's a, a number of other ones, but I think you're right, Stephanie, the, there was a, there's this battle going on, whether they're gonna tweak some of these things because of a perceived unfairness um, in, in the whole uh, process, vis-a-vis -vis the automakers, not anybody but the automakers, yeah. Right, right. And they do have, this article has a list, I'll forward it to you all and I'll, add it to the packet as well. Um, but it does list EV models that will qualify for the tax credit. And, you know, as we know, like like you said, Don, it's obviously those that are manufactured um, in the US primarily. So I'll, Jesse, I'll, I'll share it. Sorry. No, no, sorry. Um, Jesse and then Stella. So I want to just, this is very interesting, this conversation, but I think also makes me very nervous that in the sense of this is, we just kind of threw out a lot of half known things that all, and that's the nature of 
what's happening out there in the world, but I'm just going to sort of say, Stella, your job is not easy. I think a goal of any of our presentations should be to sift through this stuff and not present the vagary of it, but to present the, the what is clear and to create clear paths forward. I think a conversation like this is necessary to get there, but I just want to encourage you. I think there's work more than just getting the right people in the room. Um, like maybe it's like a, a bullet list, a set of links, like a very clear. And I think also to recognize that, you know, not everyone's ability to get online and track things down and find slides and sort of engage in a research project. So to, if, it's, if there's a way to do some of that research and clear out some of the noise as part of the prep for this, I think that would be super useful to anyone that shows up. Yeah, one thing I would add, Stella, is um, there's a nonprofit in Boston called the Green Energy Consumers Alliance. I've forwarded emails to you in the past. Might be somebody you want to touch base with. They, they, their website talks about you know rebates that are available. It, I, I don't know how they are. Or, you know whether it's a. You know, I get emails and you know I, I think it's worth connecting with them. Um, yeah. They run a, they, they, they run a drive green program to help people get even more you know discounts, and they're yeah. very reachable. And, and okay. Non okay. Well, non -profit. Perfect. Thanks, Sandra. Yeah, we try to get um, Green Energy Consumers Alliance to be at the Sustainability Festival when they can. Sometimes they're there and sometimes they can't do it. Yeah, I mean, so what I'm hearing is that for, for that presentation that's kind of more EV focused in April, it would be helpful to have somebody talk and be able to answer questions on charging infrastructure, um, somebody on kind of range anxiety in the vehicle itself and somebody who uh, is able to kind of sift through some of the information, the financial information and tax information. And maybe those are the same people and maybe those are different people. Maybe that's the same person that maybe those are different people. And, and that sounds like it would be a nice compliment to whatever um, presentations are happening at the sustainability fair. Does that seem like accurate? Folks at the Green Energy Consumers Alliance, I mean, especially through the Drive Green program, yeah. are probably pretty versed on all of this. So yeah. I wonder if we can get somebody from there to speak, um, you know, similar the way Lori did with the heat pumps, see if we can get somebody. Yeah. And it sounds like if, if it's not getting finalized till March, maybe second meeting in April is the time for this. I was just or the, can they be part of the sustainability fair? Right? Well, I do think it's nice to have an online option so people don't have to show up at the sustainability fair to like get this information. You you will just have a lot more people at the sustainability fair, so it's just something to be conscious about. Well, there'll be I'm people there. There'll be info because the the Pioneer Valley Electric Automobile Association, they're there with electric vehicles and information. They are there to encourage, they're enthusiasts and they're there to encourage people to pursue EVs. So they will have information, but I think the idea of doing something online in addition for one of your education series is a great idea and you absolutely should do that. I mean, people are interested, people here are interested, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, you, we talk about it a little bit, but because it is, I mean, but again, nothing is finalized really right now and you won't, it doesn't make sense to do anything till after March, till we have a clear idea of what the tax information incentives are and credits are. And again, having someone like from Green Energy Consumers Alliance would be great because they'll be really on top of it. Lori? I'm sitting here as fast as I can trying to find, I just saw a very good, in the last three months, I was at a very good um, presentation on electric vehicles that went over all of this stuff. And I I just can't find the link. I think it might've been Green Energy Consumers Alliance though, which, which would make sense. Um, so there may already be a seminar out there just waiting for us to either share or tap somebody into. I'll try to find it, Stella, and I'll send it to you if I can find it. Sure, there's a recording of it somewhere. I will send it over. Um, this was uh, on the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, correct? And how it applies. Was it about that? No, no, it was just on electric vehicles. Well, specifically, 
or well, electric vehicles in the Inflation Reduction Act, right? I, I have a link. I'll, I'll send it to you, and uh, you can confirm it and send it over to everybody. Okay, I just emailed it to you, uh, Laurie. All right, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> and Stella, I sent over poster templates as well. Great, thanks. Uh, okay, I lost my agenda. Oh, staff updates. <laughs> it's probably the next one. Uh, so Stephanie, go ahead. Sure. Um, okay, so let's see. The solar assessment um, is moving along. Dwayne's been very engaged um, in that process from all sides. <laughs> He's part of the, the tech group that's been meeting. Um, and so we've been looking at some sort of draft maps uh, that identify sort of the feasibility for the town, um, all broken down by very specific parameters. And I know Dwayne will give it more of an update next time, so I don't want to say too much. But that process is moving forward. Um, as you know, the initial solar survey that was sent to you was very much a draft and it was intentionally very simple and intentionally, um, you know, uh, very sort of sparse because it was looking for input from this committee, the other committee, the solar bylaw working group, as well as department heads. So there was enough feedback that will really help sort of um, really refine that survey so that the next one I think will reflect a lot of the input that was given. So I want to say that when we do these types of things, the initial draft is always meant to get your feedback. So I, I think sometimes people react very strongly to those, but it's not, it wasn't anywhere near what the end result would be. The guide, the idea was to get, you know, to get input on what was presented. So Thank you for that. Um, the The strategy now is to get your feedback incorporated into a revised draft. I will receive that next week. I will also revise uh, receive the engagement community engagement protocol that the consultant and I have been talking about, and we will share that with both you and the Solar Bylaw Working Group. And then. Um, Adrian would be scheduled to be on your agenda for January 18th for your next meeting. And then she'll also be scheduled to meet with the Solar Bylaw Working Group on Friday the 20th to discuss the revised draft and draft and the outreach. And you'll have more opportunity to give her feedback and she'll discuss uh, some of the rationale behind what she's working on. Steve, I know you see your hand up, so. Yeah, uh, it would be helpful, Stephanie, with the second draft of that survey, if there was a bit of an introduction that would not, would not be part of the survey, but would explain to us what the intended goals are and, and the intended breadth of the survey. Because when I, some of my comments on that, or my, some of my confusion on that survey was partly because I wasn't sure, based on the questions that were provided, what they were trying to get from the public, like what right. the goals of the survey were. Mm -hmm. So yep. if that can be expressed to us, to those of all of us who are, will be reviewing this next set of questions, that might help us focus our feedback in a way that can help the questions meet the overall goals. So I think that was one of the revisions that Adrian is making based on your comments. Okay. We discussed it. So she's going to include, I think, that. Also, um, one thing that wasn't you know, again, because we just wanted you to sort of focus on the survey. Um, the survey is actually going to also be part of a website that's going to have resources and lots of other information. So they're putting together a website for this, for the community. Um, we're also going to be utilizing Engage Amherst for feedback and input. Um, so there's, you know, there's actually going to be a lot more. It's not just the survey. That's a piece of it. So, and a lot of the explanation that you're referring to, Steve, will actually be on that page. But, uh, it, but again, if somebody is only looking and getting the survey, yes, it would be absolutely uh, useful for them to have some kind of introductory um, paragraph to that survey. So she is going to include that, I believe. And I'm going to make sure, you know, if it's not on there, I'll make sure because I'll get it before you do that it does okay, get good. included. Yeah, it'd be really nice if we could see kind of the whole big picture strategy of the information gathering approaches that they are using. And that's so what that, you're getting excellent. for the next meeting. That's so that's that's what I'm talking about when I say the engagement protocol. 
That's yes. what I'm referring to. Okay. So you're going to get the sur the revised survey as well as the protocol so that you can sort of have a look and see what has been discussed and what's been um, identified so far as a way to engage the public. And then you all can provide comment. Um, but the idea is to, um, let's see, sorry, I'm looking at my, uh, I want to look at my notes real yeah, quick. Stephanie, the, while, while I'm thinking through that, I think it'll be also good for us to po possibly look at that strategy and shamelessly mooch that off and implement <laughs> that and the pace program and uh, heat pumps. And I think, we can, I mean, there's something that we can look into there as well, right? Well, you know, it's sort of um, kind of modeled a bit of, on what we've done before with mm. the MVP outreach and with the, with some of the CARP development work and that we want to provide translation. We want to have childcare. We want to have food. We want to do it at, places where people, you know, people are the idea is really to sort of target specific people who don't typically attend these things to ensure that we're getting some real breadth and diverse right. feedback and that it's not just the sort of usual people who attend the meetings and would normally want to engage and communicate their feelings or thoughts about this. We want to make sure we're really targeting everyone and doing this in an equitable, engaged thoughtful way. Mm -hmm. So that will all be part of it. And, you know, yes, I, I think absolutely we should be doing more of this. Um, and I just, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say that um, the idea was to get the revert, the revised survey finalized by um, late January. And then we would get it out, um, you know, sometime in late January to get it out to the public, but we'd have some um, mid to late February scheduled meetings uh with folks so oops um sorry that's andra's reaching out to me um so yeah i think we uh want to make sure that we get you know this all of this feedback done by the end of january and then beginning of february is when we would start having the meetings and doing more of that direct engagement and, and stephanie you've included martha's comments as well right because i know she sent to me sent, sent me an email um, yeah, I mean, that was sent through the, that's the solar bylaw working group. I don't, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dwayne okay. can address that. I, yeah. okay. and I, th right. I, I think it shouldn't have been sent to you, quite frankly. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Stephanie? Um, I think that's kind of the big thing for now. Uh, I'm, you know, working on sort of the heat pump program development, as I mentioned with Lori, I'm working with the town's finance director on the greenhouse gas fleet inventory. I've had a meeting with the consultant about um, establishing the dashboard. Um, what else? Festival, we're thing, also but, working with the vendors. Well, the festival always, yeah, that's kind of, I got to get in, <laughs> I've got to get an email out, but I already have sort of a group of people, but I do have to get more outreach to get more vendors and folks. Um, I've got to get the word out about the festival for folks. Um, so yeah, there's that. So those are the some of the things I'm working on. There's other things too, but that's just the some of the stuff that jumps out at me at the moment. What's the date of Earth Day this year? When is the festival? April 22nd. It's a Saturday. And the festival's from 10 to 4, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we never know what the weather will be. <laughs> Last year we had a booth, I think, and I was out of town or something, but I'd be happy to volunteer to do that this year. I think we should. Sure, we, we didn't have it last year. We haven't had it for since 2019 was the last one that we held. Well, we had something yeah, last year where people did a booth. Maybe it was. Oh, we, we did something this. Well, last yeah, last year was uh, yeah. the the downtown Amherst something. What, what right, was the right, right. block party? It was yeah. the block party. Yep. So if we're going to have a booth or something there, maybe we should be talking about that at one of these meetings so we're not planning at the last second. I completely agree. Yeah. That'd be great. Well, if one of you uh, wanted to be identified for sort of coordinating that with the committee, you just have to let me know and then you would be on the vendor list. And then every time I send information out, it would go to you. I know 
I want to sign up for it. Uh, sign me up for it, but I'm, I'm going to be in India from March 17 to April 21st. Uh, so, <laughs> but I'll be there on Earth Day. Um, a lot of the information wonder, happens in that time frame. Yeah, I, so I, maybe I, not. I might be able to do it. I'm just trying to get my calendar up here to make sure that there's nothing that conflicts. Um, give me a moment. Sure. April. Oops, went right past it. April 22nd. I think I can, I can volunteer for that, um, <clears throat> to take that role. I think I'm okay. That's after Passover. We're good. <laughs> yeah, it's just that I know you also have the heat pump program. There's going to be a lot of work that's being done. I, I wonder if uh, we can ask Laura. I, yeah. Let let me let me ask Laura. I'll say tentatively, Lori, but that you'll ask okay. Laura. Okay. Yeah. And I will say that, you know, over the past three years, Laura did put in an awful lot of time. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so she I'm knows. Okay. I don't mind doing it. The heat pump thing at this point is mostly, you know, talking to Stephanie once in a while and maybe putting together a panel uh, and seeing where that goes. So I think I, you know, I have, I can do this. It's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Then I won't ask Laura. Thanks, Lori. Okay, any ECAC member updates? Jesse. So the, the new building code for residential buildings took effect today and for commercial buildings will take effect on July 1st. And I think there's some potential opportunities that I would be happy to spearhead as far as um, in particular, and, I, and I, this is actually sort of an offer slash question maybe for Stephanie and or Anna, you know, want to connect with our building inspectors. We've got a great building department here in town. They're very sophisticated, um, but the, this code has no concurrency. And so it's what what we're trying, what, you know, what we, the way I would think about it, there's something called code delamination, which means there's the intent of the code and particularly around energy. And then there's what actually gets built and installed. And does it, does do projects actually live up to the code? And again, particularly when it comes to carbon and energy. And so if there is a way that this group could maybe formally encourage the town manager or the building department to make use of the multitude of trainings that are hitting the streets right now and really understand what's going on. So that's one piece of it. The other piece is at the town is now allowed to opt into a net zero building code. We're already part of the stretch code that automatically comes over. And so do we, we should consider maybe as a group, if we want to encourage the town council to uh, adopt the specialized building code and um so there's no rush on either of these things but i think I, I would be happy to sort of if writing a letter to the town manager that then this group looks at or something like that is the way to do it stephanie i'd be happy to do that as far as the trainings and whatnot and the other thing i'll just say is the code's getting better you guys and they're even have some pretty nifty stuff about existing buildings and requiring work on existing buildings to kind of if you're doing real work on a, even a residential building, you'll have to improve the envelope and mechanical systems. So there's a lot of neat stuff there. Um, still learning about it. So that's my pitch. Stephanie, what do I do? <laughs> so, already, is ever, are you guys already on top of this over at Town Hall? So actually, real quick, I, I emailed this uh, to Anna today and we were having a conversation uh, because it's the goal, town manager's goal uh, setting time. And she said this, this home rule, um, it 
she didn't think it would be appropriate for that to be part of town manager goals but she did want us to discuss that and she wants to understand what it could look like so i think she wants to review it with us at some point so whatever we bring up and she can then take it to the council but she didn't think it would be appropriate for the town manager's goals this year at least so uh, stephanie um Vasut and Vas here i just want to um clarify that this specialized um net zero stretch code is not about home rule correct it is out of the um, existing options for building code, we don't need any special permission except our own. Yeah, I, so I was going to sort of say what Andra said is that it's just um, the specialized code just needs to be voted in by the town council. Yeah. So I think, but I, um, and I know that our um, building inspectors are great about the education piece. I mean, I think they, you know, when codes are updated, they attend um, information sessions. So I, and education sessions about that. So I think they're versed in all of that. But I would say that, um, you know, the specialized code is something I think that's a little because it's a bit beyond obviously the revised stretch code that's just been enacted now. Um, I do think it's worth having a conversation with folks here about what the implications of that would be in terms of implementing that because uh, you know I think they just need to I think it's good to sort of get their feedback on that. Flurry? Yeah, can someone fill me in? I did not read the latest flurry of emails from BEA. Did the new stretch code include net zero uh, allowing us to do net zero or is has something changed that I was unaware of? There's the stretch code and then there's a specialized code that okay. sort of takes it to a deeper level. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's the one I don't, and maybe Andra, I mean, I, again, I'm sort of, I haven't looked at it recently and there's a lot in my head right now. So, yeah. uh, um, but I don't know that it's not the home rule petition. It's not the same thing that BEA no, was going for. This is a state level. Yeah, this is a kind of turnkey thing for any town. So there's the base building code which is there's only like 50 towns left in the state that still use that. And then there's right. this stretch code yep. closer to 300 towns. And then the net zero or specialized code, essentially any town meeting or town council essentially just writes a bylaw to say, yes, we want, you know, they just, you just decide to do it. And then you have a series of energy requirements uh, that are net zero ish. Jesse, did that just change, or because it, ha it was that you had to have that the, the whole home rule thing was about being allowed to do that 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 we weren't allowed to do that net zero thing. I think this is more. It's not. I can't tell me if I'm wrong, but I thought that it was more. On a, you know, the specialized code allowed you, but not necessarily required you to. I think that might be the difference. And I don't know, I could have that wrong, but I seem to recall some kind of voluntary Hello. component. Andrew, can you hear me? Yes, we can the hear you. Special, the specialized stretch code um, was um, legislated um, last, you know, like two years ago, um, the beginning of 20. 21, 2020, uh, anyhow, <laughs> they, they finally came out with it and um, it is um, a really way better and um, we activists wish it went farther, but the um, effect of it will be that um, it, it, it's, it's going to encourage any town, any developer to up their ante um, because if they work in any of the towns that adopt it, they're going to know, you know, what what needs to be done. And I think it's going to have a broader effect, even if it's not adopted by a lot of places. Um, but it is an opt up. There's a there's a pretty good summary video about all this, which. It's about an hour long, but if you watch it, it 
double time it's it's more you can get through it i, I can send it to stephanie and and i think that would just sort of bring us all up to speed i just and and then maybe watching that and stephanie if you think there's anything this group should do as far as encouraging the town council to move in that direction it it may or may not be the right fit for this town um or if there's anything it, it might be super fun to hear from the building department like how they're tackling these new regulations um i'll i'll give you the link it's a it's a it's a sort of dated video but i think it'll really help yeah Oops. andra had started to talk about this a while ago um you know, I had talked to Andra and then Andra had talked to started to talk to you all about it. But I think we there wasn't like a we didn't have a lot of information that you all got that evening in particular. But, um, I, you know, I definitely think now is the time. Yes, you absolutely should be looking at this. Um, and I would say but again, I, I do want to be. You know, as someone who works here, I want to be um, respectful of how this would impact you know, the the way the current, the inspectors and building inspectors currently have to deal with uh, the existing stretch code and how this might change what they do um, and whether it is the right fit for the town. But again, I think you all, um, you know, your role is to help encourage these kinds of things happening in town. So I wholly support you doing more investigation and outreach to whoever about it. And I'm happy to set something up. I mean, even Jesse, if you wanted to, you know, I could maybe try to have a meeting with you and the, you know, maybe the building commissioner. I'd be happy to try to set something up for you to have a discussion. Yeah, I would love to hear how they're uh, approaching this um, and and if they're what their challenges are, because they might have they're 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 going to have it, there's challenges when you know especially when a new code is adopted um and so there may be things we can do to help make it easier make you know we're already reaching out to all these people about heat pumps and pace i think this is another bullet on that same list of hey there's a new stretch code that takes effect today for residential and takes effect july 1st for commercial and and we can the idea is to make it easier and create the path of least resistance to do great work or better work. Um, so we want to support that. This would not be a yeah. this would be a collaboration and support mission, not a hey, make sure you're doing your job. Yeah, the stretch code piece I think is there on top of. I don't think that's gonna is the is an issue, but I think the specialized code is something different. And I think my understanding too is when they voted in, they also have a grace period of implementation for people who are opting up. So um, and that's how they did it. That's how they the state sort of approached it with the stretch code. Initially, when you voted it, so, you had a grace period before it was actually implemented. Yeah, so right now, the upgrades to the stretch code do not have a concurrency period. No, I'm not. But I'm talking about the specialized code. I'm not talking about the stretch oh, code. Yeah. I'm saying that the specialized code, when they voted in, I believe, there can be a grace period so that it's not something that happens automatically that they have some time with which to no, it, yeah case. no i think it's like they, six to 12 months after that vote right is exactly when it takes right. effect yeah yes exactly Absolutely. yeah that's so what the, i'm that's what i'm saying I, it so there's seems time to me for like them. the earliest this town could have the specialized code if it was a good fit it seems the earliest would likely be january 1st a year of from 24 now. yes exactly yeah yep exactly just to contextualize the timeline. Anyway, so I so Jesse, what, into it today. so so Jesse, what do you propose? We watch the video. We bring the building commissioner or somebody else to discuss pros and cons of the stretch and the specialized stretch code, and then we vote as ECAC to whether we want to move forward with it or not, and make a recommendation. Yeah, and I think the move forward would be to write a letter yeah. of support to the town right. council or to the town manager who whatever direction that goes to say you know we've reviewed this we've talked to the building official um this is this is our recommendation and i feel like taking four months or something to do that would be fine um but if there's stephanie if you think an initial kind of 
informal conversation with Rob would make sense. I would be super excited to to hear his take on all this. Yeah, I and think report, it would be a good idea for back. as an architect. I think you're a great person for him to talk to about it. So I'd be happy to try to coordinate that. Awesome. All right, I'll send a bit link to the video. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, and also just to acknowledge that Andra <clears throat> probably knows more about this than I do. She's been pushing for it for a real. She's one of the people that made all this happen. It just happened. All all of the practitioners. It's landing in our lap today because now it's now it's the new rules, and we didn't pay attention to all the good work that went into this. We're just now we have we're now we're going to follow the good rules. So thank you, Andrew. Okay, any other ECSE member updates? No. All right, let's talk about the items for the next meeting agenda then. So we'll have, uh, um, so not the education series next week. So we'll just talk heat pumps and solar. Anything else that we want to cover, Lori? I know we talked about the festival planning. Do we want to just kick off and do some brainstorming around what we want to do? Okay. Yeah, I think we should do that. Spend some okay. time talking about that a little bit. And you're okay. going to have Adrian as a guest speaker. Yep. Presenter. Hmm. Well, I shouldn't say guest speaker. She's going to talk to you about the um, solar survey and outreach. Solar. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, Jesse, I, I have an action here for the specialized stretch code. I'm not sure we'll, if we'll be discussing that next time, but uh, yeah, watch the video and then figure out yeah. what the next is. Right, I think maybe we should have an assignment of watching that video because I certainly need yeah. to understand that. Um... Yeah. Steve? Yeah, for that solar update, a um, couple of meetings ago last month, we looked over the spreadsheet that Duane had put together to help us sort of get a better estimate as to the acreage of or the amount of solar that the town would need under different scenarios. I, I think that's a really important discussion and I'm not sure what the appropriate time frame for having that is, but I think it will take some meeting time to go through that. And what I hope eventually is that we will come up with a recommendation fairly formally that will pass along to a town manager that can then help to shape the discussions, um, including the solar bylaw development. So I just wanna make sure that whenever the appropriate time is, we have enough time to go through that calculations, explain it, understand it, and then talk about it and reach a consensus on what our recommendations are through that exercise. Okay. Uh, Steve, uh, yeah. can I just build on that? Oh, um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I tried to get my hand up, but um, yeah, uh, absolutely, uh, Steve. And um, if, if if memory serves me from the previous meeting, there are a couple updates that I, as a first step, um, uh, there's a couple updates I want to do, including uh, adding into the spreadsheet what where uh what we currently have installed in Amherst um uh that we can take credit for already um and I guess um just to tee this up Steve and and everybody is that um as we think about the recommendation and so forth or or how we might want to use this tool to uh, both allow, other people to do their own analysis with it, uh, but also to use it ourselves to come up with a, a consensus recommendation from ECAC. Um, my sense is that we might wanna do that somewhat in concert with the mapping exercise uh, that's going on. Um, um, they kind of work with each other or inform each other. Um, to some extent, you want to do them separately. You know, what's our goals? What's our vision? Without knowing what we have, but at the same time, I think we have to also, you know, maybe take into account um, the resource we have 
uh, or resources we have in terms of the, the technical potential uh, and so forth. So that can be part of the discussion as well, uh, I think. And that that um, uh, that the, the, the consultants are, are working on that. Um, and, and also importantly, do recognize that the mapping exercise in, in the conversations with the consultant, we're really trying to um, view that and make that sort of an apolitical analysis. Uh, it's just, um, you know, what makes wh where things lie or end up with regard to more or less technical potential, uh, scrubbing out certain areas that are off limits for various different sort of non-political reasons. It doesn't really get into where people want solar or or, or uh, prefer this type of place or this type of place. It's more um, what is the availability of, of, uh, of land and the suitability of land around Amherst, land and, and, and built environment around Amherst, um, uh, sort of on a one to 10 scale type of thing in terms of suitability, uh, but all with regard to suit suitability for, uh, for non-preference sort of issues, but more in terms of the, the um, uh, uh, physical characteristics and um, area, parts of land that are already off limits. Stephanie. Um, I just wanted to point out that if you're trying to do this in a timely fashion before the solar bylaw gets developed, that's due May 30th. Yeah. So you'll probably want to get this well in advance, I guess. Yeah, I think, I mean, next, yeah. next in, in two weeks or whenever we meet next, I think um, I should be able to um, pull together sort of the updates on the spreadsheet um, and, and the, um, I have a, a, a somewhat at, at a date, but it's probably hasn't changed too much except for the make sure the landfill and I think Hickory Hickory Ridge I have in there as well in terms of proposed or, or expected uh, uh, capacity installed in Amherst. But I'll get that up to date with the latest data. There's probably been, you know, a few more kilowatts of, of residential projects as well. And Dwayne, you're just focusing on everything but the institutions, correct? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think when I search the databases, uh, the, the everything in AMR shows up and I'll scrub out uh, the the institutions. Yeah. Yeah. I think just my main point is that's going to be a, probably a fairly lengthy discussion. And yeah. I, I, I will advocate that we do what we need to meet the Massachusetts 2050 goals as a separate thing from what we think we can have based on land use guidelines. I, I see those as two separate issues. Yeah. I think they're going to be far apart, but that's a problem we're going to have to deal with. Yeah. Um, so let's just make sure we schedule plenty of time in the near enough future to get to allow us to make a recommendation that can help shape the solar bylaw. Sure. Yeah, I, I think I mean it's more than an update. It's more of a of a, of a concentrated discussion item on this as a as a whole not just me providing an update so right. uh maybe maybe in two weeks i can provide an update and sort of get the the spreadsheet up to snuff and then maybe the next time after that um if time allows to have a, a substantial agenda item on on um getting review input and and, and discussion on it that would be february 1st yeah, when you have this that oh sorry you're you're um you're having your six o'clock voice. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Lori. So I, I was going to say that that I think that's really important. I think that should be our focus for the next couple of meetings. I don't have not going to have anything else to say on heat pumps next time, so you can just take that off. I mean, this is not a lot to say right now. So uh, I think the solar. I think we should give Dwayne as much time as he needs. Put that front and center. Yeah, that's next. what I was going to say. Yeah, and we already have okay. Adrian as a guest speaker, right? So, um, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, I was going to suggest we can drop festival, the planning brainstorm, but yeah, if you don't have any updates for our heat pump, then what, let's just... Well, what I can do right now is I can just ask people to please send, you know, ideas about festival planning. And if we have five minutes, maybe we can do it, but I don't, I, you know, this time, if we do it in a month, I don't think it'll kill us. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So the, uh, the update for... Well, yeah, the progress report next week is going to be solar anyway. So, Duane, you might as well take the entire time. Yes. Um, and then we'll still talk about the festival planning. Just, just five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay.
Anything else that we want to cover? So I also have, when we're watching the stretch code video, um, we won't be discussing it this week, or sorry, the, the next meeting, but we will talk about it the week after, or the meeting after. So the first meeting in February. Jesse, would that work? Or two, two, one. So watch the video before two, one, and also an urgent action uh, on giving feedback to Stephanie and Don about the pace. And I emailed you all um, the document. Okay. Uh, anything else? Right, we have one um, one person in the public, so let's open it up for comments. Stephanie. Dave, <laughs> you have anything you want to say? No, can you hear me? We can. Thank you. No, I've just been listening in. It's um, been interesting and uh, no, all good work. And I've learned a lot today. So thank you for asking, but I'm I'm just here to listen and uh, uh, thanks. Dave. Dave, could you t tell everyone who you are, just in case anyone doesn't know? Oh, sure. Um, this is Dave Zomek. Uh, I'm the assistant town manager. I work closely with Stephanie and Rob Mora, our building commissioner, um, Chris Prestrup, our planning director, and of course, support the town manager and the council in, in their goals. So I uh, touch a lot of different projects in Amherst from the North Common to conservation efforts to Hickory Ridge solar and and many more. So never a dull moment, but uh, happy to listen in for the last hour or two on, on all the good work you're doing. Thank you for joining. Andra? Um, yeah, I just wanted to, can you hear me? I'm on my thing. Um, I, um, oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, um, the the um, CCA, um, no, the Joint Powers entity is um, very, 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 very close to being launched. Um, the Valley Green Alliance, it's called, and that's Northampton, Amherst, and Pelham's um, joint effort to um, reduce our greenhouse gases. And um, one of its major charges will be running the um, electricity aggregation. Um, <clears throat> and we will be um, needing um, community representatives for the community advisory committee. Um, and we're hoping to have it be um, you know, pull from diverse parts of our population. So just want to put it out there um, to our radio listeners and, and to you. So, yeah, we're close. Um, Very exciting. I also just want to acknowledge that um, um, uh, we had um, a loss in the Amherst community. Um, one of our <laughs> Um, green architects um, died over the weekend, and um, Laura Fitch will really be missed. Um, and I wanted to acknowledge that. I hadn't heard that. Really sad news. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really quite terrible. That's shocking. Um, she, for those of you who didn't know her, she just a staunch advocate for sustainability for community. It's done so much good work in this town and other places, both professionally and beyond. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. That's, it's mm -hmm. really, it's quite a loss to the town. That's really sad. Thanks for letting us know. She was a member of the co-housing um, community up in North Amherst and um, I'm um, affiliated with a number of, of people there and it's a big loss for them uh, directly as well. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, uh, anything else?
Okay, thank you all for your time. Right. And make sure you complete the two actions, please. Um, <laughs> the, the pace flyer being the priority. I'll send action items after this meeting. Thanks, Vasu. Thank Thanks, Vasu. Bye, bye. bye.